Hi there. How's everybody doing? That's great. I thought I'd throw a video up uh, today, just so you know that I'm still around. And today's video is going to be about the waggle float. Now, that's not a very common float here in North America, but it's very popular in Europe and the United Kingdom. So what's a waggle float? Well, it's one of these. It's a float, a long, thin float that's attached to the line at the bottom of the float. They come in various sizes. They're made of plastic or balsa. They can be weighted or not weighted. Um, as I said, they're a very popular way of fishing in the United Kingdom for canal, uh, slow rivers, ponds, that type of thing. Now, they're very similar to this type of float which is the double mast pencil float, but not quite the same. This float is attached to the line either end at either mast. So, so you've got these little rubber things here, one there and one there, and that's how you attach your line. Uh, I do have a video on my channel about how to do that, and I'll put that card up at the end of the channel so that you can uh, take a look. But these ones, we're here to talk about these ones. All right, so as I mentioned, you're attaching them at the bottom of the float. So it sits in the water like this and bounces up and down and kind of waggles back and forth. And you can attach it by either simply putting the line straight through that little hole there at the bottom, or you can do what I like to do, is put a snap swivel through that hole and then feed your line through the snap swivel, the hole of the snap swivel. Now this particular type of snap swivel is designed to feed your line through. You see it's got a bead on it this bead will help protect your line because a regular snap swivel has a little tiny gap in the wire where it closes at that loop and your line can actually get jammed or crimped in that and you could end up separating it completely. So if you can get your hands on these beaded snap swivels, I would strongly recommend you do that. The snap swivel just makes life a lot easier when it comes to switching out the float. You might want to go to a shorter one or an even longer one, or you may want to take it off and use a sliding uh, leader, and that way you don't have to keep cutting and tying your terminal tackle every time you want to make a change out of your rig. All right, so that's a snap swivel. Now, one of the important things to remember about this float is before you go out there, you need to shot up your floats, and that is simply uh, finding out how much weight you can put on your fishing line uh, so the float sits plumb in the water, sits properly uh, at the equator, and doesn't sink down, doesn't become overwhelmed. All right, I'm going to show you how to do that. It's really very simple. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the camera angle so you can see what I'm doing. All right? Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, so what I have here, you see, is a tall container of water. Um, you'll need something that the depth of water is higher than the actual length of the float that you're shotting. So, you know, you can use a vase, you can use a cut off a three liter Coke bottle or something, but don't use a dish. You need something that the float is going to sit in and the water is actually higher than the length of the float. Now, if you look carefully at what I've done here, this is on the fishing line. There are two at the bottom there. There are two BB shots. Uh, this is what I'm using. Uh, slip shots. Uh, these are the small ones, the BB ones. And I've got one either side of the uh, float on the line. You just see them there. And that is the weight that is good for this for this particular float. Now it's slightly just below the black line, the equator. But that's okay, because by the time you put your hook on and your little bit of bait, that will probably bring this float down a little bit more to there. Uh, weight it down just a little bit more. But that's how you want it to sit in the water, straight up and down. You don't want it up too high, because then it will waggle back and forth like that. You won't be able to determine uh, if there is a fish on the end of it. You don't want it down too low like this, down overwhelmed, because you won't be able to see the float in the river. But what you're seeing here is how you shot the float. And this particular length uh, of a waggle float, this is a plastic one unweighted. You can see the two BB shots that I put down here uh, to let it sit. So it sits plumb in the water. I knew that because I'd already weighted these up some time ago. I knew exactly how much uh, that one would take. Now, for example, this one here, 
this is a lot more buoyant at the bottom, as you can see. This actually takes a, a two larger next one up or five um, of those BB shots. Sometimes I put six on to have this sit in the water at, um, around that level there. Okay, that's where you want it to sit so that you see the fluorescent color so that it's visible in the water. So that's all you're doing to shot up your stick floats. And you would do the same thing for your double end, uh, double end stick floats, the ones you attach double end to. You do the same thing. You can do the same thing for a spring float when you're putting it in the water. You can put the weights on, test it out, and see where it sits in the water. If it's nice and plumb and just at or below the equator, uh, then you know you've got a good setup. You've got enough uh, buoyancy here that by the time I put the hook on and the little bit of bait, it'll just bring that float down just a little bit, just under that black line. And that's exactly where you want it to sit. Okay, so that's pretty simple. And you can use that method with any type of float on your fishing line. You can shot it up before you go out so you know exactly how much weight you need when you're using a float. It beats going out there, putting some weight on, throwing your line out and watching it sink down or sit too high, having to bring it back in, reshot it again, throw it back out. And you know, we don't go out there to waste time setting up, right? You go out there to fish. Now, while I'm talking about casting here, it's something you need to remember. Stick floats are very aerodynamic. They will shoot through the air like little darts. But the trick is not to whale it out there, like whip it out. I don't know what it is with people, especially the guys. Sorry, guys. Is that some guys get out there and they really think they've got to really snap the blank of their fishing rod. They really force it to get a long, um, long cast. It's not always about casting distance. It's sometimes casting accuracy. You don't have to whale it out there really hard. You'll find if you're using a pencil float or a, any sort of long float... Um, especially one that's attached at the bottom, and that goes for a spring float as well. If you whip it out there too hard, that float will wrap around your line, and you don't want that. So you just need to let it go, let the weight of your terminal tackle and the float itself take your line out, and you'll find it'll go quite far, it'll land nicely in the water, and it will sit nice and plumb. You won't have to worry about it being tangled around uh, the float because it, it will do that if you do if you try and cast too hard Okay, so that is how you shot up a float as I said you can use it on uh, any float to decide determine uh, How much weight you require in the water? Um, it's a multi-species way of fishing. It's not necessarily just for trout and carp though It is very popular for those species. You can use it for bass. You can use it for bluegill You can use it for perch. You can use it for anybody and as I mentioned before they're part of the shy bite series So because they are very sensitive It doesn't take much to see the float react to a fish taking the bait and by doing that and by having that few extra seconds you can set the hook properly in the fish's mouth uh, because if you leave it too long the fish starts to swallow the hook and the bait and then you get gullet hooks and gut hooks if you leave it too long so that's the beauty of using this type of um, float system it's light it's very sensitive and it's a lot of fun to watch so i hope you had a um, learn something today from me uh, look forward to more videos going up in the very near future i've got a couple more ideas to put out to you uh, we're not fishing weather yet they're the ice fishing people are having a great time. They got a couple of weeks early this year, but uh, not for this person. Nah, nah. I'm purely a fresh water, uh, sorry, soft water, nice warm weather type of angler. All right. So until the next time, this is Sharon saying bye-bye for now and tight lines.